Andrew Zarian, Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. I was trying to hit the post on that one. Couldn't do it. See, I'm getting rusty at this radio thing. Uh, thank you to Brandon Thurston for coming on. That was awesome. Uh, we're going to have him on way more often when we have these earning calls and, and something big happening in TV and in ratings because this is a big conversation right now. Uh, 2022 is going to be a very different professional wrestling year. You know, we are knock on wood out of this era of uh, limited capacity shows and, uh, you know, uh, no audience. We're, we're, we've kind of exited that for the time being. I'm v being very hopeful here, guys. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping. We got a very normal year, but you know, this will be the first uninterrupted year for professional wrestling since 2019. The first year that AEW will be able to go on tour uninterrupted, uh, stick with their program uninterrupted. So I'm very interested to see how it goes, but let's talk about some WWE TV stuff. And I want to talk about, and this is, and I'm going to, I'm playing devil's advocate here, right? And I'm going to talk about my own experience as someone that has been following professional wrestling since I was, God, four years old. My father came from a, was a bodybuilder. My grandfather was a professional bodybuilder. He, uh, you know, he would tell me about working out with Bruno when he was in New York and when he would travel. So, uh, you know, there, there is this connection with me in professional wrestling, and that, that's where my love for this comes. But, you know, it's getting a little harder to watch Raw, man. It's getting, it, it's getting, I mean, I know for some of you it's been hard, and I, I think I hung on for a little, little bit longer than you guys, but it, there's a lot of moving parts here. But let's talk about SmackDown before we go into anything. Paul Heyman, uh, you know, long segment in the beginning explaining why he turned on Lesnar. Goldberg came out. Bill Goldberg's back uh, to challenge Roman at Elimination Chamber. We're finally getting that match that we didn't get at WrestleMania a couple years ago. Ronda Rousey picks Charlotte as the person she's challenging at WrestleMania. I don't think anybody wanted to see that match. I'd love to meet people that wanted that, wanted that match over Becky. I know the plan is maybe do it next year with Becky or maybe do it at SummerSlam with Becky, but isn't this the match that people wanted? You know, this delay to this. And you know what's interesting? You know, when I was talking to people about Ronda coming back, when I was told Ronda's going to be back and this is the plan, there was always a sense of urgency to do the Becky match. The, the one person that, that I spoke to has been fantastic with this stuff. And... They mentioned, they said, you know, there's a, t there's a ticking time clock on this because people's lives change, especially when you have kids, right? You have kids, your priorities shift. Listen, I, I got two and I'm a different person than I, I am today than I was six years ago when I had my daughter. Everything shifts. And for Becky and for Rhonda, that's their priority. Their family is their priority. And do they, you know, will Rhonda want to do this in a year? The hope is Yes. Will Becky want to do this in a year? The hope is yes. I just, I find it in bizarre that they're not going forward with this match. I'm a little disappointed by it. So right now, the two top matches set for WrestleMania, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, possibly title for title. That would make the most sense out of this because I don't know if you don't have that title for title on the line. I don't know what makes this a very must-see match for night two. And Ronda Rousey and Charlotte. Okay. You know, that, that'll be interesting. Ronda wins. She's the champion. She does a couple pay-per-views, drops it to somebody. You know, we could figure that out. But I don't know, man. You know, I, I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not loving this. AW Rampage on Friday. Adam Cole defeated Evil Uno in two and a half minutes. Cut a promo talking about how he's the man. He wants the title. You know, we're getting ready. We're setting that up that Adam Cole becomes the number one contender. Sammy Guevara defeated Isaiah Cassidy to retain the TNT title in nine minutes and 14 seconds. Thunder Rosa defeated Mercedes Martinez by DQ. And Ricky Starks defeated Jay Lethal to retain the FTW championship. Uh, that was an interesting match. I, I actually enjoyed that. I, I, I liked the whole show. It was a fine show. Listen, when you have a quick show like this, you can't go wrong. One hour, you get a couple matches in, you're done. Bang, bam, you're finished. Next week's Dynamite, Inner Circle, team meeting. See if they break up. MJF speaks after defeating CM Punk. Let's talk about that match for a second. We're going to backtrack a little bit. 40 minutes. Really cool match, man. That was the longest match that CM Punk has had in, in numerous years. I think he did, a, he did two 60-minute draws with Samoa Joe 
in 2004, 2005. I can't think what the other longest match, his WWE longest match probably had to be almost 30 minutes. Had to be a 30 minute match. So this, this took a lot of, out of him. You know, this is a guy that hasn't wrestled in seven years or so. Did a 40 minute match. He looked great. Thought it was a really fun match. The only problem I had were, you know, a little bit too many wacky ref spots. If I were to criticize it. That Poison Rana looked great. The Pepsi Plunge looked great. You know, and this, this, the purpose of this was to make MJF. And I think they did a really good job at solidifying him as a top guy in that company beating CM Punk in Chicago. I don't think people were very disappointed in that. I think people kind of, they were fine with that loss for CM Punk. I didn't see too many complaints about it, which is always a positive, you know, when people are happy with it. Uh, so next week, they're in Atlantic City, by the way. Hangman Page, Lance Archer for the AEW World title in a Texas death match in New Jersey. They could have just called it like a, like a, like a Jersey death match. Pretty much the same thing. You'd end up in bar A for drinks. That's what would happen. And DJs for a couple of drinks afterwards. Go to Belmar. The face of the revolution ladder match qualified. So this is interesting here, right? Isaiah Cassidy versus a new AEW talent. Who will that be? If I were to put my chips on this, we're in Atlantic City, right? I'm going to gamble on this. I'm going to say it's Keith Lee. Congratulations to Keith Lee. Just got married also. Mia Yim and Keith Lee just got married. I, I you know, I'm hoping it's Keith Lee, and I'm hoping they let him become Keith Lee again. Because what we saw on WWE programming was not Keith Lee. Even NXT, you know, a lot of people said... I, I think for a lot of people that did not see Keith Lee on the independents or see what he was doing in PWG or anywhere else he was... I think they, they were very satisfied with his NXT run. You know, I think there was a lot of stop and go. They waited a while to put him on TV and to elevate him. I want to see him unrestricted. I want to see Keith Lee become who, who I think a lot of us know who he is. Very interesting. I, I'm, I'm very hope, hopeful that it's going to be him. And also a, uh, an announcement by Tony Khan. Not sure what the announcement is. I know he made a, he made a post on Twitter that Got a lot of people talking. There's a lot of words in that tweet. Never works out well. People get very confused when you when you write too much on Twitter. I don't know, man. I, I'm very excited for this. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing some, some changes happen in that company. They're very aggressively wanting to stay in that million viewership range. I think they need to when it comes to their TV. I think Keith Lee is going to be a huge help for their for the television product. I think a guy like him that's established and is strong and looks good and has a great character is going to do fantastic. But who else? Who else is next? We're going to find out, right? Uh, let's talk about it. We got a couple of minutes here before we go to break, but I want to talk about this because this was a topic of discussion on Matt Men, and it was you know what when you talk to people, when you talk to WWE fans or you talk to AEW fans, why? is one different than the other, right? And for me, as someone that loves professional wrestling, it really comes down to must-see TV. Is Raw must-see TV? Is, AE, is, is SmackDown must-see TV? And I have to tell you, for me right now, Raw is not must-see TV. As someone that covers professional wrestling regularly, talks about it, I shouldn't have to debate myself and say, do I want to watch this right now when it comes to Raw? I really, I, 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 that, that's, that's the biggest problem I have. And I gave a great example, right? You could have a match on Dynamite and it could be, you know, Frankie Kazarian, uh, you know, here's a great example, Jay Lethal and, and, um, Ricky Starks. Is that a mate? Is that a top tier match that you're going to stop and watch? No, it's not. But you know what it did do? It creates intrigue and it creates interest and you want to see what's going to happen. AEW has done a really good job at convincing its viewership, which they should be, at telling them, this is something you want to watch. Don't miss this. This is something special you're going to see. There's the FTW title involved, Jay Lethal, which you haven't seen much of. You got Ricky Starks, which is, a, which is a, a, you know, coming up in the company. Cool dude. Danny Boy in our chat room says. Do, do you get that when you're watching Raw? When you have Cesaro... I'm giving an example. Cesaro and Lashley, right? So, let's say Lashley's a champion. And you got Cesaro challenging him. It's a main event match, which is never going to... It's never a main event match on Raw, right? You're going to end up with a tag match. 
But let's say that's the match in the main event. Are you at 11 o'clock or 10.45 or 10.50 interested enough to say, I got to watch this? I feel bad saying no. I don't feel that way. And it has nothing to do with the people in the ring because I think both, both of those individuals that I just brought up, hyper-talented, unbelievably talented. But for whatever reason, they have created this disconnect for that show, I, because I watch SmackDown regularly, and they got great weeks. They got some okay weeks. You know, it's up and down just like anything else. Dynamite has some of those also. They're not, they, you know, it's not a perfect show, and it shouldn't be. Nothing is perfect. I don't expect everything that is done in a two-hour program to be catering to me. But my God, especially when it comes to Raw, do something for me. Do something. Make me want to see this. Do Give me a main event. Give me a big title change in the main event that, that's going to condition me to say, oh, wow, you know what? This happened last week. I got to see what happened. You know, we brought up the Attitude Era, and I know we got to go to a break in like two minutes here. But every week they would sign off with like Austin tied on the ropes, McMahon in his face spitting and yelling and being insane, signing off. And you're thinking, you're left there puzzled, and you're saying, holy moly, what just happened? I got to watch. I got to tune in next week at 9. 9 then, 8 now. I don't get that. I don't get that tangle anymore. And that is a problem when you're trying to build your audience. Because some weeks I watch, some weeks maybe not. I'll watch on DVR. I'll watch on Hulu where it's a 90-minute version. I'll catch it abridged. You know, I always end up watching it before my show. But I'm then I'm not watching it as a fan. I'm watching it because I'm doing the show. And that is a problem. SmackDown, like I said, I enjoy SmackDown. Their pay-per-views generally... They're, they're decent. They're fine. They're good. I don't have a problem with the pay-per-views. I, you know, you got to create something that's going to make the average ver person, I was going to say average version, the average person tune in. And I'm not getting that on that side. And that's, that's it, it's, it's affecting my viewership of it. But you know what? Listen, maybe they're going to change. Maybe they're going to do something cool. You know, I, I watch Rampage. DVR it on Saturdays. I watch Dynamite maybe an hour behind, but I end up catching it because I want to see what's happening. I'm, I'm interested in it. And some of that has to do with the fact that Dynamite is new. Dynamite is fresh. You haven't seen these matches 15 times. But on the other side, you got the New Day facing the Usos for the 4,000th time with the same... Uh, how many different finishes can you do for these guys, right? I, I, it, it, it's, it's, it's alarming to me that this is the state of their program on Mondays because it is obviously not a flagship product. And even on SmackDown, when is the last time we got a major shift, a major pop, a title change, a devastating ending? We really don't get that. It's, it's a Broadway production presented to an audience that's into it. Very interesting. I, I don't know. We got a couple minutes after this break. We're going to be back. Wrapping it up. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back after this. Sports Byline USA. <laughs> 